I'm Elliot Forrest from WQXR, and as many of you know, I do a regular series where we check in uh, with different artists. And today I thought it would be really fun to check in with my colleagues at WQXR for you to see and hear many of the voices that you hear on the radio. And here they all are. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and then we'll just have a little chat. Nemet, you are first. Hello, everybody. Uh, as Elliot said, I'm Nimet Habashi, and I'm speaking to you from what I now term radio station WHOME. <laughs> this is my study, and I've been living in it a remarkably long time. And this is one of the most bizarre periods, I think, in almost everybody's life. One is rather hoping it's going to end soon. I'm wishing everybody well hoping it goes quickly or more quickly than perhaps it's been going. I don't know how it's been for you, but I hope everybody your end is well and coping. I guess that's what we're all doing. Uh, moments have been good, moments have not. One is finding out about one's own home and one's own way of life. Finding out I've got more stuff than I ever thought I did, nor than I, more than I ever really needed. <laughs> In other words, it's a time to sort of self-evaluate and evaluate one's stuff. And I'm doing a lot of that. And it's good to see everybody's faces. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for this, Elliot. Hello. Well, it's good to see you, Nimet. I'm Bob Sherman. And I feel a little guilty because everybody's hunkered up in apartments and closed in. And I'm in Sarasota. <laughs> and that means we have the great outdoors here. I can go swimming. We go biking. And uh, as I say, I, I don't feel nearly as crowded in as everybody else. And I feel badly that I'm not as, I don't know, as, as hungered in <laughs> as the rest of you. I feel perfectly normal. And uh, I mean, other than the usual complaints, but uh, um, as far as virus, who knows? Things are a little easier. We're in a, we're in a kind of a gated community here. And so far as we know, nobody in the community has any health problems of that sort. So uh, all's well, and I can't really complain. I will start complaining when we get home in about a month. <laughs> and if we do another one of these, I'll be full of kvetches and enough to satisfy everybody. So that's it. Bob, I can't wait to hear your complaints starting in whenever we're able to start those. I'm Fred Child. I'm very lucky to host Performance Today, a national show which is on WQXR Saturday and Sunday mornings, coming out of my apartment building, Studio 4K, I, I guess I'd call it. Uh, my wife and I live in apartment 1D downstairs. My wife is a composer, Wang Ji, and she needs 1D to do her composing. So luckily we've got a friend who lives up here in 4K and he and his family are upstate at the moment. So I get up in the morning and I walk up the stairs, I get my exercise walking up three flights to, to Studio 4K, apartment 4K, uh, every day hosting performance today from here in 4K where we broadcast concert highlights. So I can't wait till we get back to being able to share cultural life, musical life, in public spaces safely once again. Uh, I so must say, I can't wait to get back to studio recordings because the Young Artist Showcase, so many of the editions involve performances right there in the studio and conversations that well out of them. And that, of course, is on hold. So we're working from recorded performances or past performances or whatever. But uh, you're right. We can't wait to get back to what can't wait. Say, yeah, can't wait. Can't wait to get back to concert life, studio life, as you said, Bob, and sports life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, looking forward to seeing my beloved Mets again in person sometime. I lo I'm loving the overnight Korean baseball. Um, so that that's satisfying my baseball fix. But can't wait to see the Mets again in person sometime soon. I know. Well, you, you remind me of my husband, uh, Fred, because we're having the same issue here. He's seriously missing uh, all of the sports and making me a little crazy. I'm Lauren Rico, and I spend a lot of time working at home, actually, so this isn't a huge transition for me. Um, you know, so I'm, it's kind of business as usual, except that more people are getting glimpses into my home, which I don't like at all because I'm very messy. So you, you have a very 
a very defined space that you're going to see because you'd die if you saw the rest of what it looks like in here. Um, but yeah, I work from home usually, so I'm used to the whole thing, the, the, the exercising at home. The only thing that's different now is like doing yoga at home, which the dog uh, is, is a participant of quite frequently, and that's rather problematic. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty good, so I, I, I can't complain. I, I enjoy it. Um, it. It's problematic periodically because this time of year, the weed whackers, the lawnmowers, that kind of thing can interfere with, with the recording and, and uh, the, the doing shows and things like that. But hey, we're all rolling with the punches. So I'm out on Eastern Long Island enjoying the sunshine and yesterday the snow. So uh, hope all is, is well in everybody else's neck of the woods. We may have lost Jeff Spurgeon. We had him here for a while. I'm hoping he can come back to us. Uh, Paul, why don't you take it and tell us a little bit about you? Well, uh, I also am very grateful to have the room that I have in my house where I've got a recording studio set up and you know to keep busy with now my garden. I actually just got back from a, a nursery. I spent the whole day putting plants in and you know it, it's kind of a homebody life, but I miss coming to the radio station uh, there's nothing like doing it live in the studio with that kind of uh, electricity uh, that got us hooked on, you know, being broadcasters in the first place. And I also, I like seeing everybody on the tiles, so to speak, but I miss the face-to-face -face contact. For example, Fred Child and I, you know, have a Saturday morning ritual. I come in, I bring coffee, donuts, he hangs out 15, 20 minutes after he's done, we catch up, we gossip, we talk about old times. And, you know, I haven't had that going on on my Saturdays uh, for a while now. Miss you, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm being facetious. Fred's program, Truth Be Told, is a very well-produced and engineered show, which is recorded and broadcast nationally, and it precedes my live radio show on Saturday mornings at WQXR, and it is a very happy association, even if I haven't seen you face-to-face -face in, I don't know, maybe 15 years, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm his relative, you know? <laughs> but uh, all's well and could always be worse. So under the circumstances, the fact that we can do what we do and continue to have fun doing it and have passion for it and you know, uphold a very high standard, there are big expectations for everything that we do. Um, you know, it's empowering. And I know that there are other people who do not enjoy this privilege and I'm very keenly aware of it. Every day that you go on the outside, you're always walking into some situation where you realize, wow, that really could be me. So we're blessed to be able to do what we do. It's a great team. We've all known each other forever. And we feel like we've known you forever. But if you're a new friend or fan of WQXR, welcome. This is a good group to be with. And this music will always bring you up and make you feel great. Yeah, so I'm Matt Abramovitz. My internet connection is working, which is a miracle because um, there's been a lot of change for my family, but the biggest one is that my two school-aged children are no longer in school. Um, and so we are not only doing our jobs, my wife and I both work, but um, we're also being teachers. So um, with a lot of remote learning, we have found that we can sustain just barely four simultaneous Zoom calls, two for work, two for school. Um, uh, and uh, we have so far, um, not been voted out of the house by any of the other members. And so I think uh, it's been a pretty successful quarantine for us and we thank God are all healthy. Um, there's been, uh, as Nimet said, a lot of moments of um, profound grief. Uh, I think it, we all felt. And also a lot of moments of real joy of spending so much time together and spending so much time with our neighbors, um, especially as the weather's turned. And for me personally, um, the quiet uh, beauty of birding during the spring migration has been a real source of joy. Um, you know, I'm kind of like letting my nerd colors out here a lot, but, um, but yeah, the, uh, the warblers came in beautifully over the last couple of weeks and it's been a reminder that even as our world seems to be um, kind of coming to a halt, there's some parts of our world that just keep going as they've always had. And it's quite a bit of comfort and joy for me. Um, and it's really a comfort and joy to be with all these great people making radio. Because um, I think uh, at the end of the day, we're all here to connect with people and music. And uh, what a privilege to do that with WQXR and this amazing team. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Matt. You know, I I said this early on when we got together that I felt in some bizarre way that I felt even more connected to the audience um, during this time that I feel like to a certain degree, we're all going through something quite, uh, uh, it's all different for everybody. Um, obviously, there are some people working from home, there are essential workers that are really putting it on the front lines and stuff, but I, I, it feels like people are, are listening more to the radio, they're connected. To, uh, I'm just curious if other people feel that way. Do you, Nemet, ha, are, do you feel a little, what's the difference in your connection to the audience now? I, I, I feel almost a kind of telepathy because I'm on during the night and I've always had a sensitivity for people that are listening in the night. Perhaps maybe even people are listening with a little bit more care and attention because they're not busily doing something else or working at the same time. So I, I just have a sense of sharing what's going on in one's soul as well as the music. And I, I, I feel a closer kind of telepathy with the audience. Um, both in the night and with the fact that there is an overriding concern that we are all engaged in and trying to cope with and trying to um, wend our way through. Thank God for Beethoven and Mozart. It helps considerably. And Bob, maybe your thoughts on this. I mean, you've been doing both Woody's Children and uh, the Young Artist Showcase. I don't even, maybe you want to count the years. I'm not sure. Uh, what do you well, feel been, like your I've connection? I've been doing it for more years than some of you have been alive. Um, Woody's Children began on WQXR, but it now runs on another station. I won't mention any other names, but the initials are WFUV. <laughs> and, and we had our 50th anniversary. No, 50th. yeah, 50th anniversary a year and a half ago already. So uh, we're now up to 51 and a half, and uh, it's been a joy to do that one. And of course, a very different audience from QXR and the young artists, folks. But nonetheless, uh, it's the same kind of intensity, the same kind of feeling of joy that I have in knowing that I'm somehow, in a little whatever minor way, helping these artists, helping the young artists, perhaps much more so. I mean... Tom Chapin doesn't need a lot of help from me, if you know what I mean. Whereas the kids who have not emerged yet, who have not, we have a, recently had a violinist who, who played on her 16th birthday, a violinist, uh, Seon, and what a wonderful talent. And how would she ever be heard by anybody on QXR without the Young Artist Showcase? She hasn't recorded anything. But here we are able to present her performances. So that is very satisfying. And it, it really is very special to know that a number of artists have told me that I was the first one to play their, play their music, to send it forth on the air. Very exciting. So that keeps me going as well and gives me enormous satisfaction. Fred, what do you hear from your audience during this time? Yeah, this has been a really interesting time to be on the radio and to be sharing music, which has this emotional articulation that like, like nothing else in our lives. And this is such an emotional time for a lot of people. And uh, I'm, we're, we're getting more email and listener calls than ever. And actually on the air, I've when I share contact information, I always give the email address, but I've been encouraging people to call because it's been really special for me to hear people's voices mm -hmm. back. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we all experience this. There, there's that intimacy of the human voice coming across the radio and, and that each of us is lucky enough to be in that position to share our voices with people. Uh, I've really treasured hearing people's voices back, even on just the, the phone machine. So hearing from listeners coast to coast and what music has meant to them and to their families and to their kids and to their parents and remembering in some cases people they've lost and music important to them or music that gives a sense of meaning and importance and sometimes hope or optimism. Uh, so yeah, these past couple of months, I have felt 
so lucky to be connected to people who share this love of music and art as a reflection of all of our hopes and dreams and experiences. And, and yes, of course, it can be beautiful and comforting and uplifting, but it can also reflect and even help us understand those experiences that are painful, those experiences of loss and, and memory of all kinds. So yeah, it's, it, this has renewed my connection to the art form itself, the art form of music, and to the connection with and among our, our listeners. It has deepened that conversation. It has multiplied those connections. So I feel tremendously grateful to be in a position to share music with people and to hear back what it means to them. Whatever they're going through, music is a part of it. And um, I have to say, to, I, I have met many of you in person, but not all of you in person. And now to see your faces is wonderful for me. Uh, and Bob, you were just talking about the Young Artist Showcase. And that was a direct inspiration for one of the favorite things, for one of my favorite things that I get to do. We do Young Artists in Residence a few times a year on performance today. And the work that you have done was a direct inspiration for that on so many, in so many ways. So Bob, well, thank you for all the very work. Very encouraging and very gratifying to know because uh, we each do our own little thing and it's good to know that it, it percolates beyond our one hour or whatever we have together and that it, it uh, makes a difference not only to ourselves and to the performers we're playing and the music we're playing, but to the audience as well. Um, Lauren, I want to hear from uh, you and uh, Matt and Paul as well. I mean, we at QXR too, we give out our email addresses and uh, it's been almost overwhelming uh, the fact that people are tuning into us. What, what are you hearing, Lauren? Well, boy, uh, Fred just said it so beautifully. Um, it, I, I think, you know, we all, are aware of the fact that it's not just about presenting music because you could just throw on, you know, a, a playlist somewhere and listen. It's about being a companion as well. And I have never been more acutely aware of that role uh, than I am right now. I feel so cognizant of people actively listening in a way that they they weren't before. Um, there have always been people who listen carefully, but now I feel like people are tuning in not just for the music, but to feel the companionship. Um, you know, exactly. You know, as as I am. Uh, you know, it's just myself and my husband. I know many people who live alone. Um, you know, if you're fortunate enough or being driven crazy enough by having you know a whole family around you, that's a whole other experience. But um, and like Nimet said, also being on at night, it's a it's a different. It's a different thing, folks who are up in the middle of the night. And I often wonder, are you up at night because you can't sleep, because you're thinking about these things that are going on? And I try to be um, mindful of where everybody's head is at right now and, and aware of the fact that we're all kind of in, in a lot of ways in the same place. And what I love is that I ask questions, you know, how are you doing? What are you up to? You feeling okay? things getting a little better and people write back to me they tweet me in real time and they send me emails and i get shout outs from wherever and and somebody will say oh wow you know what that bach really spoke to me too you really said it and the other day i got you know this felt like a really long week to me too so i i love that feeling that they're that they're talking back to me and listening and and so when i i try to convey that when i'm speaking as well and, and present it in a way hey this makes me feel better. I hope it makes you feel better too. Bach always has this, you know, whatever. So it's, it's, it's just a whole different spin. And, and I know I, I started out about the same time Fred did um, at W went back at WNYC. We came up together way, 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 way back. So, you know, it's been 30 plus years now for me anyway. And um, I, this is a, a being connected in a way that I've never been before. So in a way it's as crazy as it is. It's also a privilege really. And Paul Cavalcante, you, uh, I think, are the busiest man in show business. Uh, you are on WFUV. You do the American Standards for NYC. You're on QXR. Uh, tell me about your thoughts uh, and, and your relationship with the audience. It's fun, by the way, to occasionally bump into Bob Sherman in a, in a Bronx hallway uh, and uh, also uh, at the shop. Uh, you know, New York Public Radio, where, by the way, WNYC and WQXR are, are close together. So, yes, you can run down the hallway and take over. <laughs> but um, this is my thought, because when you sit down to do a show, the premise is 
there's this music that we all like, and we're in New York. There are many people who are outside of New York, but the New Yorkness of WQXR is a big part of his personality. So you got these two givens. There is now a third given, which is everyone's life has been changed simultaneously. You know, you're always sensitive when you're framing what you're going to say on the air that, oh, you know, I can't wise off too much about something because somebody may take it the wrong way. You don't know what they're going through. Well, everybody's going through this sudden interruption and conversion of our lives. And there was an email that came through, I guess, a couple of weeks ago by a woman who wrote about the experience of hearing me play Beethoven's Emperor Concerto, which is just one of those kind of like pillar pieces that we've always played, we always will play. No big news flash there. But she, after a lifetime of being kind of on the fence about the piece, it was not one of her favorites, all of a sudden had an epiphany listening to it in a particular situation that was a moment of release for her. She was actually running. And a lot of the emotion that had been pent up all of a sudden broke through and listening in the earbuds to that music in the outdoor setting as the world was going by and it was so different. It, it just, she had an epiphany. And I think that the beauty of our genre of music here is that it's never going to change, but you're going to change. The music remains what it is and you're going to revolve around it and have different feelings about it and impressions of it as, as your life changes and as, as our lives all move on. So the ability of, of this stuff to keep feeding us the way all great art does is a miracle. And for this to be our stock and trade is a privilege. And to get that kind of a communication, and the, the, the listener really wrote a treatise here. It was a long, <laughs> she had to say what was on her mind. And I just read it over and over and thought, don't ever take a piece that we play for granted. Don't ever take someone's listening situation for granted. Discovery is every day of everyone's life. And, and, and we're in that, in that relationship business with people. And we're very privileged to have this music and this art to build those relationships around. Matt, it wasn't my intention to uh, make this a uh, pledge drive uh, Zoom oh, yeah. call, but um, you know we've had lots of chats about all of this because I came from commercial radio. I've been part of public radio now for ten years. Um, I mean, we just we're at a point right now where we literally can't do it w without the audience. It's a it's a true partnership at this point, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, you know, as a public radio station, it's. Like it just, it's just a, a true, a truth. Like when we say on the air, like we can't be here without listener support. That is totally true. And I guess, I mean, just talking a little bit about the connection we're feeling with the audience and around this music right now, like the, the, the financial support powers the radio station, but I'd say that this feedback that we're getting really powers us individually. Um, there was an email that came in about how a fellow who wrote it and said, I'm giving to WQXR because my father, when I was a boy, used to wake me up by sitting at the foot of my bed and gently tapping on the bed and repeating my name over and over again. And I remember waking up and hearing classical music in the background, and that was WQXR. And I'm 74 years old now, and I live in Florida, but this, this radio station still reminds me of home. And that is like, you, you know, I just melt when I think about people whose lives have been so um, kind of threaded together with the radio station uh, that we're part of now. And um, I feel a pretty profound need to make sure this radio station thrives in this crisis and also in good times. Um, because, you know, there is this, you know, listening to WQXR is part of the experience of being a New Yorker, near and far. And um, so I take very seriously raising money to support the station and also listening to these uh, listeners and the, and the comments they share and the way that this music and the station have touched their lives. It really uh, kind of is what gets me uh, out of bed in the morning. Uh, and now the commute is just like way more better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't want to keep you all. Um, I actually have a turkey in the oven that's got to come out. It, um, but uh, any I'll final thoughts? I'll give you my address. You can ship down the, the legs. The leftovers. 
Yeah. Uh, Robert Sherman, uh, Nemet Habashi, uh, Lauren Rico, Fred Child, Matt Abramovitz, uh, Paul Cavalcante, and Jeff Spurgeon for about five minutes. Um, thank you all so much. I, I love you all. We love the audience, and uh, thank you so much for doing this. Thank Thanks you. for organizing this. Everybody. Thank you. Great to see, see you on Zoom. Hey, be well.